<laughs> Look at you back for more Daddy's Working Podcast. How about that? So, look, there's no time to dilly dally today. So let's jump into what I have for you. If you're not living up to your potential, if you're working too much, if you're not getting the big wins that you need to take you to the next level, then today's show is for you. First, I'm going to make the case for never being happy. Then I'm going to show you why you really need to work less in order to get better results. And after that, we'll talk about how you can fail your way to success. Oh man, 3.30 in the morning, time to get out of bed. Why do I even get up this early? I know, but I just walk over to the bathroom, take care of some things before I get my day started. Step in, close the door behind me, turn on the lights. Oh, that's bright. Look at the counter, there go my workout clothes, ready for me to hop into them after a quick bio break. All right, let's get out there and get after it. First things first, make some coffee. Clean out the dishwasher. Next, shave. After that, it's time for my morning formula. Read my morning formula, do a quick meditation, and then a little bit of journaling. That is how I start every workday. And if you don't have a morning routine, I want to give you a gift right now. Get one. Whatever it is, wake up, drink some water, read a book, do a journal, plan your day, whatever it is. You should have a morning routine that you wake up out of bed and you get right into because it's going to set you up for the ultimate success. I promise you, you start doing this and you start putting your list together first thing in the morning and you start checking things off very quickly you are going to be a more powerful, happier, more energetic person. So in my morning routine, I like to read a little bit of Kikich's Credo. And I've talked about this in past shows, Kikich's Credo. You have to just Google it. K-E-K-I-C-H-S. Credo. C-R-E-D-O. I read this every morning. I read about 10 of them. There's a list of a, a hundred different things. I read about 10 of them each morning as part of my morning formula, my morning routine. And the weird thing is that number 59 is something that I was planning on talking with you about today. So let me read that to you. The foundation of achievement is intense desire. The world's highest achievers have the highest levels of dissatisfaction. Those with the lowest levels are failures. The best way to build desire is to make resolute choices for the future. So when you get up and you plan your day, you're making choices for the future. When you plan your week, when you plan your month, when you plan your quarter, you're peering into the future and making your dreams a reality. You're setting up a roadmap for success. And one of the crazy things is a lot of people think that goals are the driver. Goals are what make you get out of bed in the morning. And to some level, yeah, sure. If you're dreaming big or dreaming bigger, then that will help drive you. But the real fun, the place where you'll spend most of your time and the place that you better learn to enjoy is that journey getting to your goals. Funny thing is, when you achieve your goals, you're just going to be looking for the next one. If you are a, an achiever, if you're a winner, if you're a go-getter, you're just going to be saying, damn, I did that already. What's next? And I'll give you a perfect example of this. And I didn't realize how 
badly, reaching a goal could affect me. But uh, recently, a few months back, Cupcake and I decided that we were going to go ahead and sell our house. Been there for eight years, beautiful place, too big for us and too far away from our family. And we just wanted to get closer. We We had this dream. I mean, since we got married, we had this weird little dream that we would live downtown and we would go downstairs and go to happy hour and walk around the park and just have this downtown lifestyle. And for a little while after Huddy came home, it really didn't seem possible. And there's a lot of reasons for that, more than I can explain in this show. But we got to a place where we said, this is the time to do it. And uh, three days into our search, we found the perfect place. I put an offer in on it and got accepted. Nice condo downtown in a building that we love, that we always dreamt about being in. And we're like, holy cow, this is amazing. And we can't believe this is happening. And it's happening so damn fast, it seems like. I can't believe it. We had forgotten that for 10 years we wanted this. And when I got to this place and when we moved in, I got filled with this overwhelming feeling of dread. I was sad. I was empty. And I couldn't understand it because this this was a dream. We dreamt about this for the last 10 years. And here it was. We were living it. We could hear the car horns and the people downstairs and the music for brunch. And we can look out our patio and see palm trees in the pool and beautiful buildings. Everything we ever wanted was right here. And I felt depressed. And I didn't understand what was going on. And when my dad came over, we were out there talking and we were looking, they're building a high rise across the street and they're putting in a tower crane and there's construction workers out there in green shirts and a bulldozer and all kinds of equipment down there. And I tell dad, you know, I remember when I was 19 or 20 working on those condos in Ponce Inlet, I would sit on the side that faced the ocean, eating my lunch, and think, one day, I'm gonna be in one of these condos, and I'm not gonna be building them, I'm gonna be in here, and I'm gonna be living here, and I'm just gonna be enjoying this. So what I thought was a dream of only 10 years turned out to be 20 plus years of dreaming, and I finally accomplished it. So 20 years of dreaming, of planning, of plotting, of doing, of failing, that got me to where I wanted to be. And I just got so into the journey that when I got to the destination, I felt empty. And so you have to look, you have to look ahead and know that once you reach a goal, you're going to have to set new goals. And that's why I'm talking about being dissatisfied like yeah sit there and enjoy that moment but okay I'm on the seventh floor well now I want to be on the penthouse and not only do I want to be on the penthouse I want to be on the penthouse facing Lake Eola side so I can watch the fireworks and the Christmas tree that is what is going to drive you that is what's going to motivate you getting there the work you have to put in the ups the downs once you get there you have to be looking for what's next. So you want eternal growth in your life? Stay dissatisfied, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you were getting into that, but what kind of marketer would I be if I didn't make you an offer? So check this out. How would you like to spend more time with your family and less time on your business? Before anyone chooses to do business with you, they need to know one thing. Can I trust you? But building trust can take forever. And I know you don't have that kind of time, but what if there was a way to build trust in minutes instead of years? Would you want it? I know you would. So go grab yourself a copy of my Digital Daddy's Toolkit. Inside, you'll get my top three speed influence tools to make you a trusted expert in any market fast. Go to daddysworking.com forward slash DDT to grab your copy today. 
So here's a problem I see all the time, and I've been guilty of this, and I wish I would have known this earlier on, and it wasn't until I got into Strategic Coach and really started learning about the entrepreneurial time system, I figured out how this works, and I'm still working at it. And so this here is a reminder to me as much as it is sharing with you that when you're trying to build a business, when you are a person who is eternally dissatisfied and you always want to grow and you always want more, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you need to do more. You need to do more. You have to do more if you want more. And this is a a trap that almost all of us fall into. When things are getting hard or you need to hit that next level, you always think about what else you can do. And thinking this way, yeah, sure, good, you're a high achiever, but it can be counterproductive. Because the problem is, When you are doing more, you are depleting yourself. You are taking away your reserves. You're taking away your creativity. You are sapping all the life out of yourself and you're not replenishing. And so one of the things they hammered into us the first year in Strategic Coach was the entrepreneurial time system. There are three types of days in your week. Number one is a buffer day. And a buffer day is where you're doing cleanups. And this is actually where I believe most entrepreneurs spend all of their time in buffer time. And this is why they fall into the trap of thinking they need to work more. The purpose of a buffer day is to set yourself up for success. So the other two days are focus days and focus days is where you do your unique ability things that only you can do and we like to think about these as days where you're adding value to the business either by bringing in money or by creating systems or assets for your business so the buffer day helps you prepare for those the other day and actually Equally, if not more important, are free days. And free days is from midnight to midnight, you can do no work. And Dan Sullivan says that you should have three free days a week, which means that you would only be working, according to everybody else's standards, four days a week because you only have seven days in a week, right? So free days three days a week, and this is where you replenish. And so the way that he explains it is when you are fresh, when you're coming off a free day, you've had time to disengage and let your mind go, let it be free, let it enjoy, let it replenish. So when you come back to work, you are fully focused. And I look, if I hadn't have done this myself, I wouldn't believe it, but so much more creativity comes out. Look, I wouldn't have believed it myself if I hadn't done it, but I know after you take a free day, your creativity boosts. So if you think that you cannot replenish because you got to go harder, you are incorrect. The way to get more creativity, the way to do better work is to take free days, which is why I say work less and make a bigger impact. Because if you've got those free days recharging your creativity and then you're putting in two focus days, maybe three focus days a week, you will be surprised at what you can accomplish when you are fully focused, fully engaged and fully into whatever it is you're working on. And so to give you an example for me, a buffer day would be A, planning whatever's coming up for my free day, whether I'm going to be 
watching a movie or going for a float or any of that stuff. So planning my free day activities and then prepping for my focus day activities. So for instance, recording this podcast right now is a focus day activity. And the way I got ready for this was on a buffer day, I planned out three episodes so that on my focus day, all I have to do is open up my notes and go ahead and record the shows which I planned on the buffer day. So that means I'm making the most impact when I'm on a focus day. So a quick recap before we move on. You're depleting yourself if you're working harder, if you're working more, if you're trying to do more in less time, you are robbing yourself. Take more time off. Take some free days. Replenish yourself. Get your energy up. Get your creativity up. Then use the entrepreneurial time system from Dan Sullivan. Use a buffer day to plan your free days and plan your focus days and you'll be making way more impact in less time. So one of my favorite books is Psycho-Cybernetics. And when I first got into business, I thought this book was stupid. But many years later, some friends of mine, some mentors told me that I should take a look at it again. And it was a totally different thing because I was ready for the book. It was the right time for me to read it. So the reason I'm telling you about this is because earlier in this program, I told you about my morning ritual, my morning routine. And one of the things inside my AM formula is a little excerpt from the book, Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. Let me read this to you here. Do not be afraid of making mistakes or temporary failure. All servo mechanisms achieve a goal by negative feedback or by going forward, making a mistake, and immediately correcting course. Skill learning of any kind is accomplished by trial and error, mentally correcting aim after failure until a successful motion, movement, or performance has been achieved. After that, continue learning and success is accomplished by forgetting the past errors and remembering the successful response so that it can be imitated. What does this mean? I like to think it means fail fast and fail often because every failure gives you an opportunity to correct your course and get on target. So if you're afraid of failing, if you're embarrassed by the idea of failure, look, it's not your fault. I mean, we're trained like this in school. They have these grades and you either get an A or you're like me and you get a bunch of D's and F's and there's a pass or fail. And if you fail, you're just no good and you shouldn't be making mistakes. And that's taught to us early on and it's faulty thinking. And this is one of the things that I am really looking to impress upon our son, Huddy, is that failing is a good thing as long as you use it to get to your success because you can't take a fail and let it crush you. You got to take a fail and say, oh, well, another way not to do that. So let's get back to work. So fail fast, fail often. And these guys, the guys that I told you about, actually, it's the smartest guys in marketing. You can check them out on our website. Worked with them for a year at a very high level. And one of the things that they shared with us was this idea of small bullets, small ideas that you can launch in your business and see how they work. See if they're worth chasing after. And I've done this many times. I mean, I small bullet that I did not too long ago was a Facebook group, the Authority Podcasting Group. Did it for six months. Did not like it. Got bored with it and stopped doing it. And then another small bullet, which is one that is actually making an impact, is our book Builder Beta. And just mentioning the idea of being able to write a book without writing a single word and having it done in about two months is is mind-blowing to most people. And that was just a small bullet that actually worked. I can't tell you how many of them didn't work. But all you need is to find out, oh, 
that's not working. Let me shift my approach and get to something that is working. Fail fast, fail often, and you will achieve the biggest wins that you never thought were possible. This is how you reach the next level. This is how you become an institution. Fail fast and fail often till you get on the right course and hit your target. Uh, We went everywhere. We talked about never being happy and how staying dissatisfied will actually help you to achieve more in your life. After that, I shared with you how you need to take more time off so you can replenish yourself so that you can be more productive, so that you can be more creative, so that you can do more in less time. And then we talked about failing fast and often, how your failures get you to success. They're just data points. They're telling you, nope, that wasn't the right way to go. Course correct and get back on target to hit your mark. That is all I have for you today. We'll be back next time and I have no clue what I'll be talking about, but I can guarantee you one thing, it's going to be good. See you then. This is the podcastfactory.com.